Live from New York, it's Ask This Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to another live edition of Ask an Engineer. This is the wicked, awesome version of Ask an Engineer. Oh, uh, wicked, I get what you're it's doing there. It's super pissa. It's uh, <laughs> me, Lady Ada. I grew up in Boston, so I can talk that way. And with me is Mr. and Lady Ada, yeah. who uh, did grow up in Boston, but it's oh, cool. I declare today, wicked day. And we've got, as it's I my said, my a wicked, <laughs> a wicked, awesome show. Tell them what's on tonight's show. On tonight's show, we have. <laughs> that's a bad accent. Okay, uh, Wicked is the code. 10% off all the way up to 11:59 p.m. tonight. That's uh, in celebration of a new board. We'll be talking about that soon. Love we'll the show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing their projects. Pack of the mailbags and stop by. Adafruit Jobs board. Time travel. 3D printing. Raspberry Pi. New products, we're going to answer your question, we're going to have a trivia question, all that and more on Ask an Engineer. Yay! Yay! That's right. Okay, so uh, let's pay some bills Absolutely. real quick. Um, so the code is wicked, and uh, we'll talk about why the code is wicked in a little bit. Um, for folks who order $200 or more, you get free UPS ground if you're in the continental USA, USA and a free half size from a proto board. We also, if you're in Manhattan, do same day delivery in New York City. It's on checkout if you're in the zip code that is service, and it's been working out pretty well. Um, folks always want to be reminded about this because they are in New York and they watch the show and they're like, if there was only same day, and I'm like, there is. Yeah, because so, for many years people say, if only there was a same day, but now we have it. Yeah. And people use it, it's okay. working out. And a reminder, this is Ask an Engineer. We do this every Wednesday at 8 p.m. and we just did the show and tell, which was 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have so many shows. We'll talk about all the shows. Right now we, we have a lot of shows. We have a live show. We, for, for about three and a half weeks, we had a live show every single day. Yeah. Like, nonstop. Like, weekdays, weekends. It was yeah. me and Tony D, or known Pedro. I think yesterday we finally had, no, two days ago we finally had like a one yeah. day break. But we had we were going strong. Yeah, and I'm glad you, you mentioned that. Um, so this is part of the Adafruit Live series, and this is- Whoa, all, it's a new logo. Yeah, it's all part of the shows that we have almost every day now. So we have Desk of Lady Ada, and we That's do me. that usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays and also over the weekend. Um, we also have uh, Watch Tony D's Desk, and then we have a new show, and here's the intro for it. This show is called um, Pseudo Random, and it's um, a show that uh, we started with Colin. And uh, yes, we did that yesterday. Yeah, and uh, so long ago. Yeah, and this is a, a new show where um, Colin shows something that's interesting to him, and you kind of ask and questions. And it's kind of random. And it's kind of random, and uh, I wanted to show the music video from it. So it's also kind of a um, if you're maybe my age ish. You remember there was MTV and they used to play music videos and there was VJs and I, I think some of the neat content that we're doing is kind of interviewing the artists. Colin's an artist in addition to um, a programmer, which I think is art. He's a engineer. musician, an yeah, artist, a, a lover, a carer, a yeah. brother, a father. No, and, I don't know. And, so, and then he also kind of brings in a video that he made. Yeah. So um, here's just the video segment. You can watch all of uh, Pseudo Random. It's on youtube.com slash Adafruit right now. But here's the music video from the first episode of Pseudo Random with Colin and Lady Ada. Kick it! Thank you. 
that's it. I, I was just like mesmerized yeah. by these beautiful circuit boards. So if you like this, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, like it, uh, write a comment and say that um, because we want to keep doing these and uh, because uh, we don't charge money for videos or anything, your comments and also like buying electronic kits helps too. And then you can hear about some of these circuit boards if you think you're like, wow, what is that yeah. blue PCB? Uh, I ask some questions of Colin on the pseudo random, and he he just kind of talks through it, and it's yeah. kind of fun. And he's gonna be we're gonna be doing them, and maybe another one next week. We'll I think see. The color organ is next. And color we just organ. Have, we have he's got this whole Radio Shack too. color organ. He's gonna take it apart because we were yeah. talking about it at the end of the last video. So what we might do is at the end of each video, we'll kind of springboard onto the next topic. Yeah. Topic so uh, we're continuing on um, the the path to like Adafruit TV, where we have you know amazing. Uh, art and science and electronics and engineering content every day of the week. So we're trying. Um, next up. Have our own network soon. Show and tell. Every week, people around the world show and share their projects. Oh, it's time for me to do my thing. Their trips around the world to other places where people are uh, making Boise. things. Boise. Yeah. So what was on the show and tell this week? OK, we had a full house. We started off with Tony DeCola, who has, is talking about some of the many Pi 3 live streams he's been doing. The latest one is really interesting. It uses uh, NetConnectD, and he did a tutorial on NetConnectD, which allows you to turn your Pi 3 into a utility where you just plug it in, and it makes a Wi-Fi access point so you can connect to it and then set up the SSID, set up the config, and then reboot it. And you can basically, you don't need to even uh, SSH or have a, you can have a headless and have it all net connected. And, and it's kind of neat. It's just like all-in-one uh, um, utility for uh, internet connected things, so very handy if you're going to do IoT stuff. Knowing Pedro, uh, I've been doing a ton of live streams. Um, their design of the Pi Girl Zero, which is like super cute little like, it's like a Game Boy Micro kind of, which was a keychain Game Boy. So they made a Pi Zero version of this with a 2.4 inch screen, um, buttons and like battery charging. It's all 3D printed, and they're adding a circuit board, and they're doing um, tons of layer by layers, and yeah. they're also doing a 3D 360 video. We're gonna be playing that during the show tonight. We're gonna be playing it, but then if you go, but if you go to YouTube, you'll be actually an extended version. You can do the 3D. Yeah, one day you'll be able to upload your consciousness, and then Noah and Pedro will print you on their human printer. Yeah, that's, maybe that's like, yeah in like the year 3000. Yeah, that was it's not out yet. Don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we also had uh, a bunch of new people, which is great. Yeah. Nate Davis uh, built his first project, a Jeopardy button game with like four 3D printed buttons for playing like a Jeopardy type game. Uh, he used a feather and um, batteries and these large arcade LED buttons and then a little LED matrix, sorry, a seven segment LED matrix that'll tell you which button was pressed first. So you're like, you know, okay, Person number three, you get to go first, and then person number two gets to go second, person number one, whoever, whatever the order is, they all get a chance to answer the Jeopardy question. I have no idea how Jeopardy's played, actually. It's been years since I watched it, but mm -hmm. whoever it is. Uh, IBM uh, has an AI that just beats it I know. All. That's how Jeopardy's played. Yeah, I know. So uh, Watson campaign. Yeah. Yeah. We also had, uh, so it's kind of neat, it's a first project, a great first project. Matt Jensen uh, went to boisecodecamp.org, which is an event at Boise, Idaho, and um, got a lot of photos and videos of demos, and a lot of them had Adafruit stuff, like um, HP, as you see, HP was there, and there was some programming um, tutorials and teaching kids how to program and how to do Internet of Things for cheap, and uh, he made a little trinket badge, and um, all sorts of just like fun stuff. So um, neat, if anyone out there goes to an event and you take, yeah, take photos take photos and show them on the show and tell. That's, yeah. that's part of show and tell. Like I said, we don't get out, so we, we live through all of you now. We, uh, we just hang out at the Adafruit factory and, and work, so uh, go out and, and show cool stuff. Take great HD photos. It's almost like us being there. And then eventually you'll take 360 videos and we'll be able to kind of almost be there. That's the plan anyways. Uh, yeah. Stephen G uh, made some fine art with an 8051 motherboard that he found, and he's going to like wire in a trinket to make like these red LEDs blink, and he's going to add a solar panel and battery charging, and maybe like a Wi-Fi Arduino or Leonardo, and um, basically make this like internet connected 8051 motherboard art. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's like lumpy. It's got this transformer, um, so that's going to be a cool project. And it, we did make our shreds on that one. Um, Richard Curley. Uh, came by and him and his son are doing stuff with first robotics and uh, I guess in their high school 
And uh, so he made, um, so the kids were working on the robot and the dad gets to have fun making all the accessories. So he made um, a badge that the kids can wear that says their team name and has a little like matrix animation. So that's really cool. And it's a little battery powered mini trinket badge. And then, good night, Kay. <laughs> um, and then uh, a hat with a servo in it that has a spinning, um, that was cool. Gear. It was super cool. Uh, so it, it's a hard hat. It has like neopixels and a, um, a spinning wheel. So that was a really fun project. So I kind of like it because you can tell the son's just like, I'm working on this robot and it is not finished. And the dad's like, I'm going to have fun making fashion tronics. Neopixel hard hat is cool. Neopixel hard hat is really cool. So you got a sticker for that. And then Les uh, came back. He's, uh, he's been working on Enable which is 3D printed arms for kids who uh, don't have complete arms or they don't have all use of their fingers. And so they can 3D print uh, um, prosthetic hands or arms. And uh, that was a project we did a couple of years ago yeah, with Google. We had some of the top people around the world who create, make, send these things, also who do electronics for the 3D printed hands. Mm -hmm. um, really neat. And uh, Les was, uh, He's working on something for this right yeah, now. Yeah, he's working on making internet connected versions that will be able to phone home to the office where they were just making and distributing um, these, uh, these arms. And so the people who are making and distributing them can tell, are the kids actually using them and how much? So it'll be like a little accelerometer and yeah. a, um, ESP8266 in it. So they're kind of thinking like, what can we do to, to determine whether people are, um, using these 3D printed arms and like, when do they use them and what are they using them for? And that's, that's gonna be more useful than asking them. Because if you ask a kid, they'll always say yeah. like, oh, of course I'm using it. Yeah, I totally did my homework. Yeah, I read an um, article today. Apparently people are more honest with their health apps than their own doctor. So when they want to do some type of health goal or if they're putting in information, they'll, they'll tell a, a data logger or a device or their phone app more intimate information than their healthcare professional. So maybe that's, oh, yeah. that's an that's interesting funny. thing. Maybe people will trust the electronics if they're building them or doing things on their own more than, oh yeah, like I'm using this thing. Oh yeah, like, things, I mean, yeah. Who, who doesn't always tell their dentist? Like, of course I floss. Yeah, right. Fl you're not flossing. Uh, okay, and then Lottie came back and is working on getting his servo working and he's learning a lot about Eagle Cat and like looking at other people's projects and learning to analyze them. So he's, he's getting a lot more skill in um, building this project, a lot of experience. And then C. Scott is building a mini line in his shop. And so he's yeah, cool. wiring up like 220 power and he got a little neodent pick in place and a little oven and a little screen printer. So it's like a little mini, like a little mini Adafruit, but it's um, just like desktop. So this kind of reminds me of actually the first setup we had at Adafruit, although we, the neodents didn't exist then. I would have totally gotten one of these uh, $3,000, 5000 picking places. Yeah. At the time, actually, the cheapest we could get was a $30,000 picking place, which was great. It actually lasted us for up to only three years ago. We replaced it. Yeah. Three years ago is only when we got our new uh, picking place line. Yep. But, um, but yeah, this is kind of neat. These, these, these equipment that you can get now, you can... If I was going to do an Adafruit now, it, it would take me a third less time. It would be a lot different. It would yeah, be totally we had different. To, yeah, we saved up money. We uh, had a, fit, a friend drive us in a van to New Jersey to go check out these machines. And then we went eventually to, to meet the maker of the machine. And uh, it was a big deal for us. It's like $30,000 is a lot of money. But then we used that to build the company. And there wasn't really any resources. We, we wrote a bunch no, of No, I had to write the documentation for the picking yeah, place. Things didn't come with documentation. It was neat. So anyways. Um, all participants on the show and tell get an uh, scene on the show and tell sticker. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com and we'll send you out a sticker. They're vinyl. And, They're super cool. Yeah. And uh, every week, just check out google.com forward slash plus adafruit and you'll see a post that has the show and tell. And uh, because we have so many people in the show and tell, just look for the link. And when you click, click on the it. link, seven, uh, seven twenty nine. 729 yeah. gets yeah, where you usually. should get in line for the show and tell. Usually works Fills out. Fills up fast. Okay. All right. Mailbag. So I tell the story every week, but I'll say it again. Uh, we have an all-company meeting called State of the Fruit. We do this every week, and we read your emails to the entire company. And on Ask an Engineer, we also read the emails that you send us. So this one's from David. David says, thank you so much. By the way, I love your new website, the practical how-tos from others, the videos. I'm at the site at least once a day dreaming about how Aww. to make new things, nice improvement. Thank you. This is when we launched our site. David sent us. Yeah, we have a backlog of, but you should still send in your lovely notes. Yeah, we've made so many uh, updates to the site once we got this platform of, uh, 
I guess I'd say publishing, like publishing products, publishing videos, publishing tutorials, publishing our shows, that um, the site does update very frequently. We just did a big learn update. Adafruit.io is out, and uh, we have um, a pretty neat, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit, just a little preview. Uh, we have a pretty neat subscription service coming. Okay. Wow. All right. Neat. Adafruit.com slash jobs. It is uh, the best and only place that we know that makers can post their skills and get cool jobs or, and or, um, uh, companies can look for makers. This one is a maker of all trades. I really like this one. So this is a fellow named Tyler and he's offering his services to anyone who needs help with developing, constructing a project or product. I'm well versed in Arduino and Raspberry Pi, along with Atmel and ARM processors, experience with PCB design, layout and production, you can build things and ship it to your door. And uh, you can go through all the different skills and things Tyler brings to the hmm. maker table, I'll to him. the workbench. Okay. Now what's neat about this is we get asked for this type of consulting all the time, and this is why we made the job board, because we, we don't stop to do consulting, we work on products to ship to customers. So um, that's a kind of uh, neat uh, person. Uh, check it out if you're um, oh, yeah. if you're like, boy, I wish I could just have Lady A to make my project. This might be a person that you can talk to instead. All right, he's going to get roped into like 8,000 Kickstarters. Yeah. But good okay. luck, Richard. OK. Um, this is Nimbus, the friendly cloud entity. I don't want all your data, maybe, sort of, kind of. Um, but he's so friendly. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is part of our Internet of Things segment that we like to do. Um, now every week, since we have Adafruit.io, the, the maker Internet of Things site. Um, we have a new blog that has the updates and more. Todd and Justin and Tyler are doing an amazing job on this. This is a screenshot of the EC2 monitoring oh my goodness. instances, so you can kind Hack of see. faster. Yeah, so um, that's neat. And then people have asked about um, our, the status of it, and uh, this was from 14 days ago, so it's not, uh, there's a lot more. So in the last um, seven days, 14 days ago, there was 24 million inserts into the database. There was about 9,000 users. There was 6,700 online feeds. And there was 50 inserts per second via MQTT. And there was five inserts per second with the REST API. So this is um, something. MQTT is the way to go. Yeah, yeah. And I was watching Twitter, and people are taking little videos, little vines, little, little periscope things of their uh, projects. And you can see they'll wave a, a device that Adafruit makes, like an accelerometer or whatever, and you can watch Adafruit IO update almost in real time. It's interesting, 50 inserts per second, although it's, it's actually not that much. No, yeah, it it's depends. interesting. Yeah. And so check but out. But you still have to have a lot of structure because it's, yeah. it doesn't end. Like you 50, 50 inserts per second forever. Yeah. And it's only going up. Yeah, so it is growing quite a bit and we're scaling and it's a free service for now. We'll probably have a pro tier at some point. So if you want to, join the Internet of Things, um, this is a good free way to do it. It works really well with a lot of our IoT devices and more, so check it out. Okay. Um, Journeys is still humming along. This is our uh, film fest. You can win one of these fabulous prizes. Can you say it's buzzing along? It's, it's buzzing, buzzing along. along. And uh, these are our Floating. judges. And uh, one of the things I like, I've said this a bunch of times, I'm going to say it again. Um, Helen, who is a co-founder of iRobot, who is now um, the CEO of Sci-Fi Works, which is a drone company. It's a Kickstarter uh, uh, drone. Most qualified to judge. Yeah, so she's actually a CEO of, her, of the uh, of, a, of a robotics company that, or a co-founder that shipped the most home robots in the world. So, anyways, that's one of, just one of the many judges that's on there. So check that out. Um, more news. Arduino, Arduino, Arduino. Arduino news. Um, in case folks forgot. Um, you know, we make Arduinos here in the USA now. Yay! So anything with Arduino.cc, that's an Uno, a Mega, a... Um, what's our other one that we make now? We make the, the Micro, the Starter yeah, the Kit, micro. the Mega, and the Uno. Yeah. We only make four yeah. at this time. And so um, look for Arduino.cc. Look for those. They're made by us. We're weirdos. Got the weirdos. And uh, we'll be celebrating Arduino Day. It's in two weeks. And we have a bunch of stuff planned. So Arduino Day is a worldwide event. Go to day.arduino.cc. Look for events in your area. We're going to be doing live broadcasts all day and talking about Arduino, showing cool projects and more. And that's uh, that's that's what we're doing. Yep. So we might do some from Native Fruit Factory. We might do some from the we Desk will, of Data. All sorts of fun stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's it's nearly. Is it how many years has it been since Arduino came? It's been like it's been like 11 years now, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like yeah. 11 to 12 years. All right. Oh, 2015, I think. Yeah, is when it came out. Okay. Cooking right along. Okay. Uh, new learn update. Yes, I'm ready for what was on the learn guide, learn system this week. Okay, so, so we did the tutorial for the Adafruit Wicked Wi-Fi. That is by um, 
K-Town and uh, TAC, who basically led the uh, development of this massive feather. We'll talk about it in new products. Uh, I also wrote up a little tutorial for the DS3231 uh, Precision RTC for the feather wing. We already had one for the breakout, but some people were asking for pinouts and they wanted diagrams. I was like, oh, I, should, I should write it up. So I put up a little tutorial. Um, this one's interesting, the fair weather friend. It's, it's it basically just a little demo that tells you when, you know, if you have like an allergy or migraines, it'll, it'll tell you when the next day is going to be um, high risk for allergies or migraines based on the weather. But what's more useful for most people is that it's, it's a demonstration of how to do web scraping and how to do it in an intelligent way. So it's not just like build this project, but actually um, how to, when you don't have an API, when you basically have a web page, I think like AccuWeather is the page that Phil B is using, how to scrape that page and get the data you want out of it um, yeah. with an ESP8266. So it's a, it's a general purpose tutorial with a specific I like this because there's so many places where there's structured data and how you can get it and then do something with the Internet of Things. Yeah, sure. If it's like, it, you know, if it's, if it's easy, if it's already in like the cloud or if it's, if it's in that, it's a little easier. But for this, it's like, there is no RSS feed, there is no JSON, there's no XML. Yeah. You just have to go in there and just like parse the HTML. And then I did a super micro tutorial on um, compiling um, the at SAMD21 um, bootloader. It's, just, it's super quick, but I just needed a note for it. And I don't think, I think the Trick React counter we did last week, if not, it's the, um, yeah, we did, because we showed the video of the up-down counter. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that was that. So it's four yeah. tutorials this week. Okay, we are up to 957 tutorials. We will be up to 1,000 soon, that's pretty cool. Yay. Okay, time travel. Every week we look back in the world of hackers, makers, artists, engineers, and even news in the world of open source hardware. So, I don't know if you knew this, but. What? Five years ago, hmm. um, Everyone was voting and debating and discussing the open source hardware logo, and there was um, voting. And uh, here are some of the logos yeah. that could have occurred. Could have occurred, and uh, this was um, pretty much five years to the date. And 129 logos were submitted, and then this was the winner. Yeah. And this is what a lot of people see. We've used this uh, logo. Um, it's the open source hardware gear logo. And uh, right after that, there was a bunch of controversy about it because it was uh, claimed that uh, if you look at it, OSI, which is the Open Source Initiative, mm -hmm. it's uh, like a circle with a keyhole, Yeah, which is interesting. Mm. And so mm. there was a bunch of debate about the origins of the, the, the keyed open source was hardware logo. Was there a logo. nerd fight? There was a nerd fight. There was a nerd fight. There was a nerd fight. And it just nerd went, fight, and it went nerd on fight. forever, and it was like a classic like mailing list meltdown thing. And what's cool is um, a million years ago, I designed a logo that was a round circle with a keyhole, and that was in uh, 1999, and I had a book called Flash Enabled, and a website, and what's cool is you can go on the Wayback Machine and, and see this. Yes, there is some Wayback Machine. Yeah, you can see my logo yeah. and everything, and this is there my There's some proof. Yeah, and then in 2006, the OSI had an identical logo um, that uh, they had, and then in 2011, the keyhole uh, logo, and then in 2012, this robotics logo, and this idea that there's a, a silhouette of a person slash keyhole has been going on for a while, so, um, eventually, the people at OSI kind of agreed to have a coexistence with the, o the open source hardware folks. And now, right now, they're coming up with another logo because they want to have something that's different and there might be a certification. But anyways, that's the history of the logo. There's also a great version of this logo for the open source sex toy initiative. Yeah. I We're not going to show you that I one. I haven't put that one. We didn't I, put that one, but go Google for it. But it's anyways, hilarious. I happen to really like logos yeah. and electronics. So one of my favorite logos is the next logo. And then my other favorite logo is uh, the Adafruit logo. I, I designed it and I worked with nice Bruce um, to refine it. And then uh, the Hackaday logo I designed, and that's still used to this day. And, you had uh, a pretty good run going I there. I had a pretty good run, so I care about logos. It's just funny that there was fight over this idea that there's like a, a key silhouette thing. It's not a new idea, and for someone to claim ownership, especially when I don't, the, the, the cosmic coincidence was a little weird that I happened to be the one who made an identical logo uh, six years before. Yeah. So anyways. That's a pretty good nerd fight. It, can... it was a nerd fight. Okay. That's cool when you can like way back machine it, you're like. Bam! Way back machine is pretty cool because one, you just send Bam! a link, you just send a link and it's like, there it is. Sometimes you know it's like the it's like the money that everyone saves by using the Wayback Machine instead of a lawyer. You should contribute. Well, they're still lawyers. The they're no, still lawyers, but, but it's just like it kind of makes the conversations a lot shorter. All that money saved, yeah. contribute back to the Internet Archive. Yeah. Okay. They deserve it. Terabytes of data. 3D printing. Here is this week's video from Noam Pedro. Um, they have a shop tour 
And then we're going to show this uh, uh, time lapse. So here's the shop tour. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to our shop tour, the 360 version. Go ahead and look around, and if you're on your phone, you can move around with your phone, or you can just tap and move, swipe around and move around. Make sure your audio setting, your quality setting, is not set to auto. Make sure it's on the highest quality so you can get the full pixels. That should be just 1080 since we're using okay. the Theta S camera here. Yep. So let's talk about our main area. This is where all of our printers are stored. A total of four shelves. The 24 inch one for the smaller size, and then these bigger ones are the 48 inch size. So you can get these at Lowe's, and they are the uh, black steel ones. So you can just adjust those how you need. Yep, so uh, the printers are in the main spot here, and below the printers are the spools of filament. There's, I, I can't count how many spools, there's too We've many lost to count. Track. Yeah. But they are out in the open because uh, we don't have any moisture problems here because we have central AC. We also have a HEPTA filter that's running over here. Keeps the air nice the and dust away. away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. so we have ABS, PLA, all of the wood and We have so much Ninja Flex. Yeah. So much Ninja Flex, every color. Right below that are the power uh, backups, the battery backups, APC. XS1500, and it's just the APC. A couple uh, of power strips, uh, and for all the printers, of course, and we also need power strips for these LED lights. So these are running off the trinket, and of course some uh, power, uh, power supplies for the, the uh, Raspberry Pis. Okay, and this is the garage. This is where we do a lot of the sanding, post-processing work. We have the Ember 3D printer over here. So we have the station for doing all the cleanup and all that over there. Another the station over here is for um, staining staining stuff, uh, applying finishes and other things like that. And if I ever need to drill anything or cut anything that has a lot of sawdust, I tend to do it in this table over here because you can easily clean it up and get the dust out of here that way. And then we have the Lulz Bot and the Orion Delta 3D printers over here. Yep, those work well because uh, if you ever need to print ABS, it's nice and warm here, so yeah. you can do that here. Yep. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Yep. A lot of people like to have their uh, the garage is just chock full of stuff. We try to keep it empty. You never put cars in here anymore, so <laughs> just try to keep it empty as you can and, and do a lot of the the elbow grease work here. Yeah. And that's pretty much it for the studio tour. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah. Make sure to like, subscribe, and let us know if you have any specifics on any of the tools or gear that we might have, might have missed. Yeah, a lot of details to cover, but uh, yeah, let us know in the comments. And we'll see you guys next time. We'll try to do some more 360 videos. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. All right. Epic and 3D cribs. Now yeah. I'm like, I kind of want to be like swirling. Yeah. But that's kind no. of like the maker dream what they have there. So um, check out the full extended version tomorrow. Yeah, and outs. if you have a, if you have like a Google Cardboard, you can put that on. You can float Pre through. Pretty much any of the VR things. If you go to like the YouTube videos, where you you'll see a little um, little round. I, I'm sure there's a name for it. It looks like a little compassy thing. Yeah. You can like pull the video around and look around. It's kind of neat. Yeah. Um, and then here's a uh, time lapse. Gimbal. It's, a, it's an egg crib. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to have something for your eggs. Yeah, gonna hold your eggs. Egg castle. Keep okay. your eggs safe. Humpty Dumpty pun there somewhere. Eggs. Okay. Um, so for pie news this week, um, I just wanted to mention a couple of things because there's really long form videos that we've been doing on Twitch and YouTube Live. And so for Desk of Lady Ada, um, you did the open OCD tester using Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and I thought I could and, show off and my... You did 
part one and two, yeah. Yeah. And uh, do you want to talk about that real quick? Yeah, I thought I yeah. could I could talk about it and also show it Should off. Should I leave this up or do you want to do you want to go underneath? I here? think it would be best yeah, so to be if I okay. did. Hi. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've been working on, last week I actually did a lot of stuff, I, I, not as much working on new products, but working on testers so that we can get um, feathers back in stock. So I'm going to give myself okay. some room here, sorry, just one second. So I've been working on making these testers, and this is like a demo of one of the testers. So this is to test um, the feather wink, oh thank you, the feather wink uh, 3100. So I could. I could try to power this up. We'll see if this works. But basically, it uses a Raspberry Pi with a Pi TFT and um, this little clamp. And this clamp is what holds the um, oh, sorry, the um, feather in place. So let me try this out. I'll see if this boots. I didn't quite grab a power supply. Yeah, Plug in. we're now making the nicest testers because it matters how you test. It does matter. So. Um, it actually doesn't matter because you want it to be very fast, but also like really good quality. So one of the things about these is that um, this has a, an at SAMD in it. So it's, it's a Cortex M0 chip, and this chip has a lot of space in it, like it, you know, much more than um, an AVR. And also to program it, you can't just use like plain SPI bit banging like you do with an AVR. It's a Cortex M0. And so you really need to use something like OpenOCD or the native tools that are designed like Atmel Studio um, to program these chips. You can't, you know, you used to be, you get away with a lot with like something like an ATtiny 85 or even at Mega 328. The programming, you can actually program it with an Arduino. It's very simple, but with these, you actually need some software. So you, had, you used to have it running on the Mac laptop, but the problem is that, you know, every time the Mac laptop would update, like El Capitan, a USB, like doesn't work quite the same. Um, and like, there's just a lot of customization. Also, you know, if you want to run more than one at a time, you, know, the, you have to install the software on the laptop. And so I thought, well, let's make it so it's a standalone system. So this is a, a Pi 2, and you get like this nice color coding here. It tells you which product this is, PID 3010. And these are some wires that are actually connected to the GPIO pins on the Pi. And that's what the tutorial is about, is, is how to get this working. And the Pi actually runs open OCD and bit bangs this chip. It actually can program it using raw GPIO to do the SWD commands. So there's a reset wire a um, SWD clock and data, and then ground and power goes through USB. So that's why there's only three wires, because I, I, I don't want to have a ground loop. I'd rather have ground and power go through here so I can test the power on the micro USB. So we'll see if this works. So we plug this in and see that this red light's lit up. And then open the clamp. Live testing. Live testing. And then place it. We sell these clamps in the store now. We right? do sell these clamps in the store because they're really yeah. handy. And this, this is clamping it down to a nice pogo pin bed so all the pins are connected. Um, and then if you can see what this says here, it says press uh, button number 17 to test. So there's a shutdown button and a test button number 17. So this is just the Pi TFT. And when you press this button, it'll actually start programming this chip. So it'll give you feedback. It'll say, you know, programming, programmed. And then um, it'll connect over USB. It'll program in the certificates because you want to have as many SSL certificates as, as the default that you want to use. So it does that. I'm hoping this. Uh oh. Yeah, of course, it's like the one time I needed to. Yeah, live demo, man. Live demo. This Hold is on. the thing. This one, I, this one, I, I have actually a couple others I can test because we're this one I grabbed off of a desk and it might not be super stable. Looks like it's putting in search. Okay, sorry. Starting self test. So, sorry, self test. So sometimes it's like it's hanging. We're still working out all the details, and this is okay. written in Python, so I have a little and, Python script around. Oh, that's on. neat. So then it gets on Wi-Fi and then it pings. No, actually, well, yeah. Sorry, this does, and yeah. it, this. Um, the Pi itself is just reading the output from the serial port. Yeah, that's port. cool. So yeah, this goes on and does a scan of the networks and just checks like, you know, can I connect and stuff? And then when it's done, it'll tell the Pi that it's done and the Pi actually prints out this and then programs in the final blinking test. So you can see it's just yeah. doing a, a final LED blink test. So all of the um, feathers that we have basically now use this overall setup where, um, you know, you plug it in, you clamp it down and then you program it. And what's nice about this is that it's very fast, 
um, when it, the Python code actually runs properly, um, it can program the entire at SAMD in only like three or four seconds, much faster than I could do with a J-Link or an ST-Link because of the bit banging. How long did it take to make one of these testers, you think? The first one took five days. So about like 40 hours yeah. altogether. I mean, just because I, I had to try every possible way, and I was like experimenting yeah. and learning. And we like, cut it down from like a minute to maybe 10 or 20 seconds. Right, so the, so the making the tester took the first one, yeah. not, not 40 hours, maybe it took like 20 hours to make the first one. Because I had to like structure and make the image, and like I had to customize and install all the little pieces of software, and make sure that every single future thing I might need would be installed. And then to make every additional tester takes only an hour. But then the time it takes, yeah, it used to take a minute because it would have to go through a J-Link or an ST-Link and you'd have to run the software. But now it's nice and standalone. It's a lot faster. And I also went in and I got to tweak the software a little bit. Like we have um, like the Bluetooth Feather tester yeah. is a lot faster because it used to be I would do the Bluetooth through the Mac and it took a while to do the Bluetooth LE test. But now yeah. I do the Bluetooth through Linux with a little uh, Bluetooth dongle. And it's like instant. It's actually less than a second to do a BLE scan on wow. Linux. Very, very, very fast. It's like the one thing Blues does great. Huh. So I can, I, like these little tweaks that I can do in Linux because it's a lot more powerful. Another thing is I noticed that sometimes if you do Bluetooth on a Mac, especially when you do this constant connecting, disconnecting, and like it actually would sometimes kernel crash the yeah. Mac. It was just, we were abusing it so much. This is neat. This person said that thanks to Lady to design a tester for all my PCB de designs now, not just for testing, but the exercise of designing the tester helps reveal PCB designers. It's true. It yeah. does. You, you learn a lot because you're designing the tester. Anyways, I thought this would be interesting to show because, you know, people are like, hey, like, what, what is, how do you do it? So, you know, spending a week, it's like a frustrating, so I'm like, oh, I wanted to work on new products, but now that this is done, we can test all the feathers and like, 10 to 30 seconds. Like this used to take a minute and a half, and now it takes 20 seconds. Yeah. So that means we can um, do more, do faster, get them in stock, and it's much more reliable. And I don't have to worry about like that laptop doesn't have the right version of the J Link software, yeah. and this one does. Would to, to make another one of these, just grab a Pi 2 out of stock, grab a Pi TFT, duplicate the SD card, yeah. and then laser cut this, and then like you put it together. It's, what I, this what is I think is amazing printed. about this is the engineer is in the means of production area. So you're like 30 feet away from the pick and place. You're like 20 feet away from the tester. So there's these rapid iterations for um, like 100% yield and uh, unit testing on every single one before it goes into the store. That's yeah. pretty impressive. There, there isn't just like, because I hear this sometimes because I, you know, I get emails from people who have like Kickstarters or whatever. They're like, oh, we're just going to like figure it out later and like send it to China. And the testers are the, and yeah, the, testers you gotta is the get really hard part. So okay. yeah, so now it takes 20 seconds. This is like great. You can get you know test this whole thing in 20 seconds, and then yeah. another thing that is is neat is so you know the we'll talk about the the wicked board. So right now I use a J Link to program this, and so it takes about a minute altogether because it's a big chip. But what I will be able to do because um, I we're going to be adapting it for the Pi is we'll do bit bang. So we'll use three wires to program one of these. But since we have so many, we have like 20 GPIO available on the Pi, yeah. I can actually make a jig where I'll have four. Yeah. I'll have, because it'll, it'll still take a minute, but I'll be able to do four at a time. I'll just clamp one, two, three, four, yeah. and then press the test button and we'll program all four in parallel. Yeah. Because why, you know, why not? It can absolutely do that. And then, um, like most of it's actually the erasing of the chip. So like, you know, it'll say erase the chip, wait like 10 seconds and then come back and test them all in parallel. Um, so you'll be able to, even if it's still, if, even if something takes a minute and there's no way to take less than a minute, at least you can do four at a time. Yeah. Yeah, we're at the point where Feather, the Feather line is so popular where if we don't figure this out, we actually will never be able to keep up with the demand. So yeah, it's important. This was, this was do or die. Okay, and then when you're done, you um, hit shut down, and then this does a little clean shut down. So it shut down and tells you you're finished, and now you can unplug it. You don't have to worry about um, yeah. damaging it. So this is how all the Feather, the Feather 32U4s, the, the basic and the analog are still done with the Arduino um, Zero, actually. They don't mm -hmm. use a Pi because they're much simpler. I can bit bang program them with an Arduino. But for this, you, you need to use OpenOCD. I actually started researching. Like, it's like, why does yeah. it take 20 hours to make this tester? How hard can it be? Yeah, well, you have to spend like three hours, like four hours reading the SWD protocol spec to figure out, like, well, could I? do this with an Arduino, like, could a Yun do it? Could a Zero yeah. do it? And then you realize like, no, 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 you have to do open OCD. And then you spend like five hours yeah. tweaking Yeah, well, we OCD. have two videos about that. So check it out. Anyways, I thought, yeah, was, yeah seeing it live though. Yeah. Maybe I'll take a and, tester home and I'll show you. And then um, Tony D's desk um, has Raspberry Pi connected with uh, 
uh, Python, Internet of Things, and the Fermata and Python with Tony and DVDO. So that's our Pi section. I have one more thing to mention. Um, after kind of sending the same email and um, getting snarks on Twitter, um, we have an FAQ about this. So when we have Pi Zeros, um, go to adafruit.com slash blog, and right now there, it's the featured story is the FAQ. So what's the Pi Zero? Why is it five bucks? Why can't you purchase more than one? How do they know when they're in and out of stock? How come sometimes we have packs and we run out of single units? And uh, how come we charge money for shipping? Go figure. And uh, why are there delays when you place an order for a Pi Zero? And then are there any other places that you can buy them besides Adafruit? We don't care. We link to the places that have them too. So um, anyways, people- Get them from, get them from yeah. Pi Hut, get them from Pi get them from yeah, um, so we have the FAQ. You can check yeah. it out. Yeah, I mean, trust me, we've been we've been sell, we've sold tens of thousands of the pies. I believe so, and so we don't want to hold on to them any longer than we have. I to. do not hoard them; they are not useful to me. One you thing, cannot eat them. Yeah, one thing we do though is um, we won't uh, kill our shipping team, so um, we only put in so many that we can handle per day. That's right. That we can ship. If we if we put in five thousand in stock yeah, all at once then, and sold them all, it would take weeks to ship it. Someone that'd be would say, "Oh, you took my money and you didn't ship that day," so we only put in what we can ship. So, anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, Lady, you know, before we do new products, the code is wicked. Wicked. And uh, here we go. It's also a song in the background. I have to listen to it so I can sing along with you. Can't it. Okay. That's it. That's I, know. That I know, but people, at home I have to listen to yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's time for new products. So we only got a couple new products, four new products. See, I'm from, again, I'm from Boston where a couple is three or more. Yeah. But I know that couple is actually two. We actually have four new products, but they're really wicked awesome. Take it away, Phil. First All right. Up. Well, this is a coming soon. This is coming soon, but it, we it's, we're it. going we're gonna to order some. So this is the Pi Top. And we get a lot of emails from people saying like they have these like all-in-one computer laptop things. But this one actually, they did a really, really good job. And so we got a sample of it and we put it together. It comes in multiple pieces. It comes as a kit. You put it together. However, once you put it together, I'm just letting you know it does not come like this. You have to assemble it. Once you assemble it, you have a Raspberry Pi laptop. And I even have one. Okay, do you want to hold it up in the big camera and then try to do the overhead? Or what do you want to do? So yeah. it's, it's actually a laptop. I think people are going to like this. I'm going to tell you who I think is going to like this the most. Go. I think the people that are really into um, kind of making their own laptop kind of bunny style, yeah. where you, you know everything about it, you know the open source kernel, you know everything that you can figure out about it. Yeah. And super high security. It's also it's on an SD card. It's almost like a burner. Burner OS. So we actually put a Pi three in it. Yeah. And so I, I, I don't think I should play YouTube videos, but it can it can play like yeah, you can so play like YouTube laptop, videos. Laptop, it's a laptop. You put the keyboard and, and you there's a Pi underneath here. You can kind of sort of maybe see it. This is a trans it's it's translucent, but it's quite dark. But there's a Raspberry Pi underneath there, and so you put a Pi three in. That's what we suggest because it comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, and then you you know boots up. You can use their image or you can boot whatever image you want. Um, it's got a battery. I have it plugged in, but yeah. you can un unplug it. Look, I just unplugged the battery. I don't, I don't remember how long it runs. Maybe like four hours on a battery, but there's a little yeah. battery inside. And Great for the kids and great for Snowden. Yeah, great so. for Snowden. And there's, um, it looks like you can have the GPIO cable come out here. So if you want to have like cables or um, like hardware. Oh, yes, this is for USB. But you can also have maybe a GPIO cable slide out here. Oh, no, this... Sorry, I totally misunderstood what that was. My mistake, sorry, that was a little slidey up. It looked like a slot, but it wasn't. It's actually just showing you the Pi and then the little helper display hub thing. And, um, but yeah, you could, the GPA actually comes out here. And where does it connect to? Maybe on the bottom? I don't know. Yeah, as you can it tell, we just got this. I, so yeah, it's got coming this. soon, um, sign up so we know how many to get. Um, they ain't cheap, but there's nothing better than these. These are really good. We like these. Yeah, so. this is this is pretty neat. And so let me yeah. put this back. And there's a little bit of space. I mean, you could put a little bit of, of sensors or prototypes or a breadboard in here yeah. if you want it. This is part of the one laptop per Stallman project that we're working on. It's not. It's not really open. So the pie is not. Yeah, so I know. He wouldn't, well, he wouldn't like be close as you can get. But you could you could suggest you could uh, change this out with like an Odroid or a Banana Pie or whatever. I basically, you, I'm sure you could because it just uses HDMI. Sure. So if you really wanted a pure open source, all winter 20 thing, you could, yeah. okay. you could do that too, probably. Right. But anyway, sign up. Coming soon. Wrong. We have a power supply. Hold on. Let me uh, 
Look at this. We okay. This is an updated product, but I did bump it because it's a, a significant upgrade. Um, the power supply is now a 2.4 amp, 5 volt power supply. So people who have the Pi 3, um, the Pi 3 can draw quite a bit of current, especially if you have like all the Wi-Fi and power and you're stressing out the, the chip by doing all the stuff with it. Um, you might want a little bit of extra power. So it's basically the same power supply we had before, but a teeny little bit um, uh, more power. You get uh, 400 milliamps more, but basically the same plug, micro USB cable, FCC UL listed. It's a really, really good quality power supply. We've been selling this for a couple years, and it's the same one that goes in all of our packs, and people love it. Um, never had any issues with it. Like, power pies, like, nicely. Okay. And then uh, we have a book, but this is no ordinary book. This is not an ordinary book. This is a big book. deal. This is the Art of Electronics hands-on lab course book. And for those of you following along at home, you may remember that Our Lady Ada was quoted on the Art of Electronics, the latest one that did come out. And she's also quoted on this one. Yes. So, so this book, which I just yeah. got, did we actually take one home yet? If not, we should. We do. Yeah, I think we, we do get... have one because we're going to do a desk of Lady Ada. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do have one at home. So this, home. yeah. So this book is ginormous. Okay, just like to give you a hint. Um, but this book, it's not, it's not like the old um, spiral bound copy of. Um, wait one second. I don't think it's going to work out the way I think it is. Really? Weird. Used to. Yeah. OK. So um, this is not like the old book where you would follow along with both. You actually, um, this book is meant to be standalone. So you can go through and follow this. And it's more, well, it's more educational. Like you, like instead of just, just teaching you the theory, there's a lot more exercises and projects. And there's like a list of parts you get and you actually try out you know, resistor dividers and then they, they instead of just having it be like one little section they actually kind of um, take you through each section and it's it's just like a massive again there's labs for each one but you don't need to have the art of electronics this is actually designed to be completely sound like for example they cover like breadboards which is not you know that's it's it's a little bit too practical even for the art of electronics um, hardcover book but they have you know projects and labs and you know they they tell you know how to read resistors and so they go into much much more depth of how to actually practice and also what goes wrong like what things do you have to learn like for example you know when you read a multimeter um, if you're you know depending on what setting you have your ammeter on you might have some small error because of the sense resistor like. This is stuff that they'll they'll teach you as you experience it. So I'm actually kind of excited. I want to kind of go through this because it's been a really long time since I did a lot of analog electronics. And um, it might be fun just to go through and review this. So I, I like it. I think both are essential. And I think the previous Spiral Bound was maybe better for, uh, it, it was really best for people who were in school and were going to kind of take a course. This is designed for self-teaching. And I think if you, if you want to learn more of the analog side of electronics, you know a little bit of Arduino. Um, you know, this is, this will take you very far. And yeah. uh, I mean, they do talk a little bit about like frequency domain and stuff, but I think they introduce it in a, in a gentle manner. Okay. So, yeah, All this right, is so a, this check is out neat. the Look site and more. And Passband filters. It yeah, so, it, yeah. And then it goes on. I mean, it, it goes on forever. There's like a chapter about FETs and I'm sure transistor man's in here. And okay. they go through digital and like, you know, here's some how to wire up CPLDs and, and, and RAM. I mean, like it goes on and on. So this is a, a thousand book. page book and it will have a lot of practical knowledge and I'm really excited. Okay. And uh, tonight, the star of the show besides you is the Wicked Feather. Wicked! Okay. So this is the new feather. This is, uh, is this, you know, kind of get back to the feather a week. Keeps the feather away, I don't know. This is um, the latest feather board. And this is one, this one is designed by K-Town and TAC. Uh, they're yeah. like a team. TAC did a lot of the Arduino IDE implementation. Yeah. And uh, K-Town did a lot of the um, project management and hardware, of course. 
and uh, some of the low-level Broadcom interfacing. This is uh, this actually uses the same module that's in the uh, particle photon. We yeah. were actually interested in this was kind of the best module that could use that chip. It's the um, the BCM four four something something. I can't remember the part number. And an STM thirty two uh, STM thirty two F two o five. I think is the part number. It's a one megabyte flash, like two fifty six k RAM, one hundred twenty megahertz Cortex M three processor. It's a pretty intense processor, and it doesn't have the Wi-Fi core built in. The Wi-Fi core is actually a separate chip, and they talk over SDIO. And that's actually taken care of for you transparently, that you, you okay. basically just say, hey, open up a TCP socket, open up an HTTP socket, and, and all of the Wi-Fi is done underneath. And what's really nice about the Wicked uh, chipset is ex it's extremely advanced. So the, the Broadcom Wicked core is it's used in like Wi-Fi dongles. It's a very trusted, fast um, secure core. It has support for TLS 1.2. It. That's what everyone really likes about. Yeah, this. the thing, the, the SSL, big thing about it is it SSL. has a lot of very good native SSL support, and it has TLS 1.2. For example, Amazon will only support 1.2. We even asked them, hey, yeah. will you ever like have a, some maybe exception for 1.0 or 1.1? They said no. Or it's basically 1.2 or nothing. So if you want, if you want to do secure Internet of Things, and you and in their in Amazon's opinion, they're like, we don't believe 1.0 or 1.1 is secure enough. Um, because there's no way to get to reject the certificate, so you would use um, this chipset. I think this is one of the only embedded Wi-Fi chipsets that can do TLS 1.2. I mean, if somebody knows another one, let me know because so far it's the only one I know of. But this this is a very advanced, intense processor. It's extremely powerful. Again, 120 megahertz Cortex M3. It's got two DACs, like eight 12-bit ADCs or maybe it's 10-bit ADCs. I don't know, I think they're 12-bit ADCs. Um, PWMs, two SPIs, I squared Cs, DMA at the wazoo. We also stuck a two megabyte flash chip on there in case you wanted to store files. Yeah. You know, it's we, a huge amount of storage for... Yeah, well, I mean, you want to, for example, we have the ability, you can spin up your own HTTP server yeah. on it. So if you want to have it as a, right now, you can um, have it as a debug server. So, um, cause we, like, while K-Town and TAC were debugging this, they wanted to, like, check the heaps and, stacks and yeah. memory management and so it actually when it starts up it would they, they would have it start up a http a web server and they'd connect to it on port 80 and it would tell them like here's fine. yeah here's the chip status i mean like it's yeah. you have 120 megahertz to burn yeah. so whatever so they could store files and and, and, cool. and photos and javascript and stuff on it so um it's quite advanced it still has the same feather format uh battery charging um, it's got this lovely little chip that, that does all this on there. And we took the Maple library, which is the board support for STM32 and Arduino, and mm. modified it to support the STM F205 and also have a lot of native support for the, the Broadcom chipset. So you can do stuff like, for example, again, I'll, you have a megabyte of flash. We put Paho MQTT in there. So it has native MQTT support. You basically just like, you call MQTT, you don't have to include a library, it's built in, and it's running Paho, which is kind of like the standard MQTT client. It's like the official-ish one that people use. It's got everything built in and you just call it and you're ready to go. Um, but it also has support for all the Arduino IDE extras, such as wire and SPI and analog read and analog write and digital read and, and interrupt attach and all that good stuff. We wrote a whole bunch of examples for it, so you can check that out. Like I think there's like 20 examples for from downloading files over SSL from S3 yeah. to MQTT to Adafruit IO to like I think this web server, this web client. It, it's very, it's, it's, we're kind of, this is kind of a new platform for us, yeah. but we're kind of hit the ground running with a yeah, lot. Yeah, the Feather ecosystem plus Wicked mm -hmm. is very powerful. Plus, you have Adafruit.io, and then you have all the things that go along with Feather. But this is finally one that you could use with any Internet of Things platform, and you don't have to worry about, like, weird security issues or, like, like not having a secure interface. Like, you can finally yeah. do all this stuff. and. I mean, it's a powerful enough processor that you know eventually we could do stuff like add like OAuth support or whatever. Like these, these are things that are are possible when you have something like this that's powerful. Yeah. And it's it's a Cortex M3, so it's like you you know you get full control of this processor, which is nice. Um, we do have an RTOS running because otherwise it's too hard to handle the like the Wi-Fi stuff happens in another thread. But you still have a lot of control over. Like you can shut down. You know, like if you want to do NeoPixels, like you can 
stop the core, you know, the, the Wi-Fi handler, stream a bunch of NeoPixels or, or use DMA and then bring it back up. You don't have yeah. to, you're not sharing your real RTOS with stuff that you can't control, which is like kind of ESP, A266, it's a little, it's very inexpensive, but there's kind of stuff happening that you don't necessarily know about. Okay. And that's new products for the night. So yeah, an amazing job. It's a year-long effort by K Town and TAC. It's amazing what they did. Um, this is awesome. K Town's going to be doing a lot of projects, videos, yeah. tutorials with this. I think we now have everything from, you know, the ESP two sixty six Huzzah Feather. It's a little, not low end, but it, you know, it's it's powerful. But it's a lot of good entry level. Yeah. Uh, doesn't have a lot of pins. Doesn't have ADC. Doesn't have DAX. Doesn't have DMA really um, to the the Atwink Feather, which is a SAMD Cortex M0 with Wi-Fi. Also has SSL, has a lot of you know has ADCs, DAX, PWM, and then up to this, which is kind of the higher end uh, um, processor and Wi-Fi capability. Pluck your feather today. I don't know. I don't know. Pick your feather. I don't know. So we Birds have we have feather. three options, <laughs> yeah. and they're all you know they're they're all compatible with all the feather wings. So you could start your project with an ESP two sixty six, then upgrade to, you know, as you need to upgrade to the feather wicked, yeah. or start with a wicked and then pare down your project. Turns out, ah, I don't need DMA or I don't need two DAX. I only need you know I'm willing to use I squared C and then downgrade to. This a is feather. intense. Who talks like this? I do. Okay. All right. Well, that's pretty hardcore. Um, that's new products, Lady Ada. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, anything that you saw that we have in stock, you can use the code, ten percent off, up to eleven fifty nine. Code's wicked. Okay. So we're gonna speed around some questions. Yeah, sure. Um, of type course. them in the chat. Let's uh, do some questions. We get ran a little bit late because we had some new stuff to show. Well, I want to show. Look, it's a big testers. deal. Wicked. Okay. So here you go, Lady Ada. This is a question that I lined up. I have a bunch ready to go. Okay. Um, Hit me. Is the Easy Link the way to go for having a sens for having sensor data go into a COM port that can be accessed via GUI? Yeah, it's it's yeah? the most COM port compatible because Windows doesn't have native BLE support, whereas it has native COM port, SVP support. OK. Um, what's a good Pi 3 project if you, if you uh, get started? If you just get a Pi today, Pi you, 3. You know what? Uh, you do, uh, install RetroPie and, and emulate some games. Uh, t Tony D had a great video where he showed all sorts of different emulators running. And you can check that out and just follow along with, the, with what he did to play okay. video games on it. Um, when's the Pi 0 coming back? Check our. Um, uh, FAQ, adafruit.com slash blog, and you can figure out how to sign up on how to uh, get a Pi Zero, why they're in stock sometimes, why they're not. Um, will there be another Wicked with uh, UFL? There might. Uh, we're not sure whether we want. The thing is, you know, people say they want UFL, but then not a lot of people buy it. So what we might do is, this is a developer edition. We might have some hardware changes. We might make a version that has antenna sw switchable antenna, either with a capacitor or with like an, a, you know, an, a more active antenna switcher so it detects, you know, if UFL is plugged in, it will switch to that, um, which is what the, the particle photon has. We're not quite sure yet, but, you know, a lot of people really prefer to have the mini antenna, but, you know, the, it's pretty good. Like, you're going to get pretty good range on this. Okay. UFL, I mean, wait um, Any chance we can power feathers from 3.3 volts by, pass a, by passing the LDO, my feather died from this. Maybe, but it's really not designed for that. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, best power supply for the Raspberry Pi 3. Check out the new 2.4 amp 5 volt power supply we just put in the store. It was one of the new products, PID1995. Okay. It's perfect. Do you know how to use a Garmin NuV765 with Raspberry Pi 2B Plus? I have no idea what that is. Yeah. Um, is there a Pi 364 bit OS project, or is that going on behind the scenes? I don't know. I mean, okay. that's up to the Pi Foundation um, if they want to do that. Right now, it is still running in 32 bit mode. Do we live in some form of the matrix? Yes. Yes. Mm. Mm, good question. Um, it's not what you think, though. Um, have you used Java ME on the Pi? If so, how can I get started? I haven't, actually. OK. I, uh, I've, I've been a long time since I wrote Java. Yeah. When will the Arduino dispute likely be resolved? I think it's going to just take a while. There's courts, and courts are slow um, in multiple countries. Um, the best thing you can do, though, if you want to end it quickly, is buy real Arduinos from Arduino.cc. That will support them. Yep. I mean, they've, they've worked really hard, and they deserve all of our support. Um, what's your favorite library for drawing images and 
onto the HDMI from a Raspberry Pi. Pi game. Okay. Can't beat Pi game. Have you ever bricked a Raspberry Pi? I have actually not bricked a Raspberry Pi, but we've received returns and they are bricked, so it is, it's quite difficult to do. Can you elaborate on why the Wicked shows as multiple serial ports? Yes, um, there is a debug, because right now, again, it's, it's, it's developer edition. There's one serial port that you use for programming in serial debug, like serial print, and then you, that's what you do to update, to up, upload DFU firmware and read debug data. The second serial port is for the AT parser, which you would use if you just wanted to like send AT commands to like AT Wi-Fi scan, and it will do a Wi-Fi scan it's for debugging behind the scenes. You can. Um, the RTOS basically lets you have two. It's kind of nice. Okay. Um, can I use the Pi TFT 2.2 inch without soldering? No, you must solder it. Okay. Um, how do you suggest tracking velocity acceleration in the 3D position of a basketball? I'd want to do that with B BLE connected. It's very hard to do 3D position um, acceleration, just stick an accelerometer on there. Um, you can actually use a, a feather BLE and just add an accelerometer, and that, that would give you motion. It'll okay. give you a lot of information. Um, would we consider developing a phone, a 3G shield? I will, but I want to use a different 3G module because the current one is not okay. great. Update on Circuit Playground. Well, the video we're working on hurts. The platform for educational electronics, uh, the circuit boards are coming in. PCB, we yeah, we're, it's yeah. going to be a couple more weeks. Solder, leaded or unleaded? Unleaded. Got to use un We're Haas here in the house. Yeah, okay. Uh, what's the best 3D design software? That one, I would say, um, post up in the comments of any of Noah and Pedro's video. Yeah, they, they like Fusion and, 360, and, and but watch SketchUp. watch the layer by layer, yeah. People use SketchUp, Fusion 360, um, but there's also open source um, CAD programs. Yeah. There's someone that's the, the program. There's one that's parametric that people are always using. Yeah, can we control the um, real-time operating system on the Wicked Feather? In which oh, real-time it You know what? This is a better, I think it's free RTOS, but... Um, Check the documentation, because I do not remember. K-Town and TAC, I think, changed um, the RTOS once or twice. Um, I bl can you control it? I don't remember. I mean, you can, you can start new threads, of course, but there is this background thread for the, 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 the Wi-Fi SDIO stuff. Um, some parts of the core, <clears throat> some parts of the core we can't release because Broadcoms, their they're, they're stuff is a, a binary blob. So we kind of link into it. Um, hopefully they'll release it open source. That would be great. Okay. But uh, the, the RTOS we're using, it's, it's an open source one. I just don't remember which one. OK. Um, someone, uh, I'm going to combine these. Someone want to know, can they read signals from their home alarm signals and mm -hmm. uh, use the Arduino or Feather or Pi? And then someone wants to know, can they detect signals on their alarm sensors so they can send alerts to their phone? The answer is yes. It, it really depends on how you're handing off that information. There's a lot of if then this that stuff. You could do something with relays. It, it really depends if you're using um, some off the shelf stuff. There's protocols that they're starting to use. Um, the stuff is starting to get easier. Like um, the Nest stuff from Google can talk to mm -hmm. Amazon Alexa and that can use if then this that and it can send um, uh, alerts to your phone and there's apps that all they do is listen for alerts. So mm -hmm. the answer is yes. It's just like it depends. Yeah, it yeah. depends a lot about which alarm like system could, is home. You can do a relay trigger thing and then do Adafruit I/O mm -hmm. and then push that to if then this that and then do an app on your phone. Like there's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah. Okay. So um, that is going to be. Um, I'll do one more. I'll do one more question because yeah, sure. we did a lot speed round. Yeah. Um, I can answer this one. In your experience, would the Pi 2 have enough uh, performance with the webcam to be using a dedicated Google Hangout device for show and tell? No. Can't no, do you actually need like a pretty. We Should have the highest end like Mac desktop computers to yeah, do stuff. The, the goal of like Hangouts in particular <clears throat> is kind of high quality audio and video, and the Pi just isn't there mm. yet. For the Pi 3, you can now watch like YouTube videos. But that's it. I mean, like yeah, basically, not, we're catching up. It's not a teleconference thing. Yeah, we're, you're catching up to like a, not even a netbook power. Yeah. Okay. okay, and with that, those are the questions for the evening. Whew. Oh, darn it. Wait. I just wanted to play that song again. New, new, new. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, trivia question. What are the rules, Lady Ada? Rules are if you've won something before from the show, you can't win again. Only one winner per my lifetime. The first person to answer the question that Phil asks in the chats, he'll be monitoring all the chats. Yeah. Uh, whoever gets it um, right that he sees first is the winner. Uh, his choice is last. Uh, we only give prizes to nice people, no jerks. 
So yeah. the, the no jerk policy no jerk stands policy for all stands. sorts of reasons. Okay. The price today is a wicked feather. Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, what does wicked stand for? Type it in the chat. It actually stands for something. It you, does? Yeah, it does. You, I didn't even know that. Yeah, it does. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So help me help me find it. So what does Wicked what stand does for? What does Wicked stand for? You can probably search for Broadcom Wicked and then go to their site. You can also go to our Wicked product page. Let's see who types it in first. And our Wicked product page is three zero five six. If you're looking for the product. Wicked. Yeah. Wicked. 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 Let's see who gets it. Ooh. It stands for something. I remember there was this movie called Daryl, and it and it was this kid that was an android, and it was data analyzing robot youth life form. Oh, so oh, hey, Adam Patron, congratulations! Adam Patron, you uh, are the fastest Googler. Yeah. Congratulations! Congrats, Adam! Yay! Oops, you won, Adam. 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 Thanks, Adam. Adam, Adam. Patron. You won. You won. Okay, Adam, Woo. email support at adafruit.com and tell them that you want a Wicked Feather. 3056. 3056, that'll help them. Tell them it's a product 3056. Yeah. And you will get this Wicked because you clearly care a lot about Wicked and you will be one of the first developers. Uh, good luck getting it working. Yeah. No, I'm just Does anyone easy. know that movie, Daryl? It was this, he was a kid robot. Anyways. It was like the first kid robot. You know what? It's every like a, every like Disney 80s movie. and 90s like Disney, there's so many of those like Dis little Explorers wonder. Explorers is really good. And yeah, Goonies, Explorers, yeah. and Daryl. Those and they always, everyone, yeah. everything always had an acronym. They were so into acronyms. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, all right. Thank you, everyone. Um, the code is wicked all the way up to 1:59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Eastern Time tonight, and uh, we'll be here next week. Um, don't forget, there's hangout 3D hangouts tomorrow, layer by layer. Maybe we'll do a stream. We might have a stream. Maybe, you lady. know what? Maybe I'll get this wicked, I'll take this home and maybe that's what I'll do for the stream. I'll get this up and running. Yeah. <gasps> and wow, uh, maybe that'd we'll be do amazing. that. amazing. Um, we'll be here next week doing show and tell, ask an engineer. Thank you so much everyone out there who supports the shows. Um, we don't have loans or venture capital and we don't have advertising on our site. Um, we just, uh, we're supported by you and that's pretty much it. So um, thanks for this. Thanks to all the Adafruit folks that, um, are working behind the scenes to keep the shows running, keep Adafruit running. Testing and, feathers. Yeah, testing feathers. And uh, thank you again, everyone, all the customers out there that help us out. We, um, we're only here because of uh, them. Yeah, so, and so uh, congratulate Cape Town and TAC uh, in the chats or on yeah. the, uh, I don't know, on the video. Uh, they spent over a year on the Wicked Feather, and it's it's an amazing accomplishment. Yeah. Uh, they did an excellent, excellent, excellent job. And go to uh, any of the 3D printing videos, any of Tony D videos, any, uh, Noah and Pedro in the 3D videos, um, Colin's latest video, and uh, please subscribe on the YouTube channel, and then also put some nice comments so they keep wanting to do these yes, videos. Yes, if we have nice comments, then we will feel like, yay, we want to do these. Yeah. And we like okay. it. All right, thank you, everyone. Here is a picture of a cat. This is Moss Betty still alive. Everything's working out. He shows up on the um, you display data. You see him on data. display data. Yeah. And here's your moment of Zener. Later. <laughs>